Hello, in this video we'll be discussing the various types of data and data sets. We'll also talk about what people mean when they say big data. Even if you don't realize it, you're using and making inferences about data every day. If you want to find the restaurant with the best tacos, you'll look up reviews. Choosing to go to the place with the best reviews is a decision you made based on the data available to you. Then if you look up directions to the taco place on Google Maps or Waze, you're relying on geographical data. Since data can be defined in such a broad and encompassing way, like we discussed in the last video, if you start to look around yourself, you'll see endless potential data sets and types of data. We can think about the various types of data in different ways. We can look at the source of the data, who collected the data, and from where. We can also look at how the data was collected. Was it collected through surveys? Was it collected through an experiment? There's also various types of measurements when it comes to data. Was it quantitative or qualitative? or a mixture of both. We can also think about data in regards to its size. In this video, we'll break down all of these important data components. Knowing the source of the data can help you determine if the data is trustworthy or ascertain if there is an agenda behind the data collection or data analysis. For example, academic researchers may have different motives in data collection compared to political lobbyists. Also, knowing where the data comes from is important for understanding any conclusions that are made using that data. For example, medical records can be a great source of data, but they may not be representative of the health of people in general, since those with medical records would need to have access to healthcare services. Potentially healthy people or those who cannot afford health services may not be included in medical records. We will discuss these issues more in our next video about sampling. There are various methods of data collection. Some are active with those doing the data collection having a clear goal in mind, such as surveys, interviews, and lab experiments. For example, the U.S. Census's goal is to survey every household in the United States every 10 years to count the number of people living in the United States. Other types of data collection can be more passive, like much of the online user data that isn't always collected with a particular goal in mind. We'll talk more about this when we discuss big data. When we evaluate data, it's important to know the level of measurement that was used. We can think of levels of measurement for data in two ways, quantitative and qualitative. Quantitative data is information you can quantify or count in units, like weight, density, and length. Quantitative data is also known as numerical data. It can help us get at the what, where, when, how often, how many, or how long. Qualitative data, or non-numerical data, is organized by groups, like birthplace, race, or ethnicity, or political identification. Qualitative data can include in-depth interviews, which can help you answer the why and how questions. Sometimes qualitative variables must be inferred, such as when determining the color or smell of a compound. Unlike determining the weight of a compound, which could be done more directly with a scale, and would therefore be quantitative. If you were to categorize a movie as a drama or a comedy, that would be qualitative. However, if you were to count all the comedies that were released last year, that number would be quantitative. Data scientists and researchers in certain fields often refer to qualitative data as categorical and quantitative data as numerical. Many variables can be measured using both numbers and categories. For example, let's look at these two students and think about the variable height. I could say that one student is taller while the other is shorter. Those terms would count as qualitative. However, if I gave you their height and said one student is six feet two and the other student is five feet four, that would be quantitative data. Age can also be measured numerically and categorically, 
Let's say that one of these students is 19 and the other is 21 years old. That would be numeric or a quantitative measure. While describing both students as young adults would be categorical or qualitative. If you were to survey a thousand students at Georgia State University, asking them about their background, their majors, number of pets, their likes and dislikes, and about a hundred other questions, you would probably think that would make a very large data set. However, the data from a survey like that is relatively small compared to, say, all the tweets from the year 2020. That size of data set would be getting into the realm of big data. Big data is a relatively new term that started gaining traction in the 90s and has all but exploded in the present day. Big data refers to both the extremely large data sets that are often ever growing and the processes used to manage, store, and analyze all that data. Since the term is still a recent creation, there are debates on what counts as big, though big data is often measured in terabytes or larger. We've had to create new technologies just to store all this big data. The size and complexity of big data makes it difficult to analyze or manage using traditional statistical tools. This has led to business, scientific, and engineering innovations. Big data is often characterized by the four Vs. It's volume, variety, velocity, and veracity. Volume can be thought of as the size of the data. Big data is constantly growing in volume. If you just think about how often you use a search engine like Google, each time you use the search engine, you are creating data. Now think about all the other people around the world who are also Googling things. That is a lot of data, and it's growing with every new search. The variety of data, or the type of data, is usually broken down into two types structured or unstructured. We'll define those in just a moment. Velocity refers to how fast the data is being created, processed, and analyzed. This can happen in near real time, unlike traditional data collection, which could take months or years to be collected and prepared for analysis. The veracity of data, or validity of the data, is extremely important. You want to have accurate and quality data, otherwise any analysis or product produced from that data would be flawed. Let's go back to variety for the moment and discuss the differences between structured and unstructured data in the world of big data. Structured data is organized in a format where it can be easily searched and analyzed using software such as a database with columns and rows, like sales sheets and expense reports. Those in the data science field often refer to structured data as quantitative data, while they refer to unstructured data as qualitative. Unstructured data is usually raw data that hasn't been organized and therefore it requires extra steps before it can be analyzed. Examples of unstructured data include images, videos, audio, online reviews, and social media posts. In some cases, there are types of big data that come as semi-structured, such as social media posts that are geotagged or organized by hashtags. Unstructured data often takes up more storage space and needs more time to be processed and analyzed. Most of what is considered big data is unstructured. All of this new data and its analysis has given us new insights, but has also raised new ethical questions, which we'll discuss in a later video. In our next video, we'll expand upon another important aspect of data, data sampling.